right, guys. So I'm here with Mary, who recently bought a new horse, right? Three-year-old. Yep. And um, kind of went with a youngster, and you brought her over here today for an, kind of for me to do an evaluation. So yep. tell us a little bit about the horse and how you came to own her and kind of what you would like to accomplish today. All right. Um, I was on Facebook, obviously, for weeks trying to replace a horse that I lost um, and found her and checked her out and um, loved her. She's broke to ride. Um, very, very good mind, although today is a new place, so yes. we're all starting over. Um, anyway, um, I had a vet check come out, and a vet come out and do the vet check, and she thought she was perfect, too. I mean, she doesn't have perfect confirmation, obviously. She has a long back, but I'm not going to be barrel racing or pole bending. Yeah. But disposition-wise, everything, yes. you thought she was good? Yes, very good disposition. Did you ride her when you yes. went and looked yeah. at her? Yeah, very, um, very smooth transitions. Um, she's way ahead of herself compared to a lot of horses I've dealt with. Okay. Um, she's not going to get much bigger, and that was okay with me because I've always had... Um, 15 to 15. I feel quite large on her, but apparently I don't look like it. So no. it's just weird. No, but so today, I were, just, were there any uh, problems that you saw? Any behavior things that you're like, okay, I know I'm going to need to work on that, or anything the previous owners disclosed to you? Um, no. I, I think um, this business, you know, just the handling part. She's a little pushy, a little too in your space. Um, Otherwise, I really can't. Um, she doesn't even like treats, which is fine. Because, see, I, I started giving her some, and now she's like, yeah. yeah. So we're not okay. doing that anymore. I learned not to do that with a young horse because, yeah. Yeah, I got so. you. So tell us a little bit what your main goal or kind of what you would like to take away from bringing her over here. A, um, find out what I can do to be a good partner and, and to educate her to stay out of my bubble. Um, you know, my previous horse was pretty, pretty already there. Um, um, so that, um, just knowing how much I should be working her and what should I, obviously softening her up as far as, she's very limber and flexible as a three-year-old, um, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of what the priorities are for sequence and yeah. what. What, yeah. what I think you should be working on, yep. and that's she's got her, uh, she picks up her feet really nice, as just for the period that you need to clean them. But holding them up any longer for a farrier, we got to work on that because okay. she snatches them out. Yeah. Um, but she has a good mind, and I wanna, mm -hmm. I wanna maintain that. Yeah. Not push her or do the wrong things to make yeah. her, because um, the vet did say. At three, she might have a real mellow nature, but at four, she might decide, hey, I know everything now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's a good point. You know, they do, it's not that they change personalities, but they, they you know, kind of go through different different seasons or phases, um, you know, from two years old, three years old, four years old, you know, until they get a little older and kind of mature and they settle, they kind of settle in a little bit more after that. But um, yeah, I think that's a fair, fair thing for them to say for sure. All right. Well, let's... Um, Let's go ahead and we'll get right to it. We'll start playing with her. Maybe, um, well, I'll just have you bring her in and just play with her a little bit and let me watch you with her a little right. bit and then I'll see if I can um, add anything. So I like to see the owner play with the horse because it, it helps me understand um, how they interact with them, which might be different than how I interact. You know, every person has kind of a different energy level, you know, how fast or slow they move. Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll have a go. take her. Yeah, okay. it's, it's kind of looking good. It's, you know, I'm used to having one that's got all kinds of problems. So this is a little bit refreshing because, well, <laughs> you know, to me, this is the ideal scenario is like a, a horse that um, hasn't, doesn't have a bunch of bad habits. You know, it's, yeah, I agree. She's a little bit pushy here on the ground. Um, this is more our uh, kind of tolerances, but see there, we'll just do a block and just say, nope, that's my space. I'm not going to, pushing her off with the halter won't be as effective as moving the stick. And all I did was move the stick up and down. And if she's in here, it's gonna to touch her. If she's not in here, it's not gonna to touch her. And uh, so that's a really important thing of a block versus a yield. A yield is, I'm gonna ask her to move right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask slow, you see I'm gonna put the pressure on gradually, that's a yield. Okay. A block is, she just came barreling into my space and I, I just said, no, you can't do that. So, so you will need to use some blocks. 
And one of the biggest differences with a block is the idea that you are be trying to find an effective level of pressure right off the bat. Um, you're because they started it. So the human, you didn't instigate the yield. We were standing here and she moved. Yeah. So that's true if you're riding, if it's on the ground. If you didn't ask them to do anything and they kind of take over um, and do something, you know, um, that's when you a block would be more appropriate. Now, I would rather be proactive than reactive. So I would rather not wait and have to block her. I would rather practice things like moving her front end over and not wait for her to be pushy because drive... So it's like if she's pushy, that means she has a lot of drive, or a draw, sorry. And so that means we need to balance that out with a little bit more drive. So this is me drive. Drive is any time you're, you're asking the horse to go away from you. Draw is what would be if I just turn and go like this, and I draw her in. And typically horses that are pushy, you need to do a little bit more drive than draw. Every horse needs some understanding of both, but if she was innately real scared of people, well then we would probably focus more on the on the draw and not the drive. So again, I'm just doing blocks here and just asking her to stay out of my space. And I'm touching her on the nose. And there's a whole lot of people that get really bothered about that. And it's like, no, you shouldn't just hit a horse in the head and can they get they absolutely can. But watch how afraid she is of this stick after I've bumped her with it several times. She's not afraid at all because she ran into it. I didn't just go kaboom on the head. She stepped into me and then I said, excuse me, this is my space. And I stuck with it until she stepped out of it. And that's one of the biggest differences. And what's, what's interesting or hard for people to accept about that is if they're pushing on you with their nose, which is what she's doing, she's not pushing with her, because they can push with different parts. If they're pushing with their shoulder, you need to go to the shoulder. If they're pushing with their hindquarters, you need to go. If they're pushing with their nose, you gotta, you gotta go to the nose. Um, Cause that's what she was pushing with. Me walking around and, and pushing her hindquarters around isn't gonna make uh, that better. In fact, it'll actually bring the nose to me more. See so here, we just wait here. And then she starts crowding again. And so I'm just going to wave this stick and say, excuse you, you know, that's my space. And that's dangerous. You know, that's dangerous. If she steps on you, you can break your foot if they step on your foot. If, you know, and what the other thing that's important to know is that behavior is not that big of a deal right now, but it will be if we let it go. You know, it turn it can turn into them biting. It can turn into them driving us away. Um, and it could get worse. And if she's this pushy when things are going completely fine, there's nothing really wrong, nothing's scaring her, nothing's going on. Um, if something spooked her from behind, you you can be pretty sure she's going to just run you over. Yeah. And so that's where you want to just, again, when things are going well is the best time to start teaching, uh, teaching those, those habits. So, so we're going to do that. Yep. So we're going to work on, work on that back up a little bit for safety's sake. And then when you're circling her, I saw, I, I saw her crowd your bubble a couple of times where if she ha- had kicked out at you, she would be a little too close. And so I want to create a little drive here. See there, I just drove her out of my space. And the difference is who moves whose feet. Okay, so watch. I'm going to crowd her, and at, there she stepped out willingly. So again, that's part of where you know we just needed to show her what we wanted. She was just kind of in a habit of not doing that, but she was not real... See here, the hip is a little too close. There we go. So let's drive the hip out. So I would recommend not when you're lunging her, don't focus on how many laps she does or moving her feet. Focus on finding something to be particular about while you're moving her. Another way to say it is you should be able to answer the question, what does the horse need to do to win this game, to get me to stop playing the game? And it's either move out when you ask like I just did there it's circle with a a more of a shape it might be lower your head at a gate it might be maintain a specific gate for amount of time but what we don't want to do is just bring them out and just just exercise them again exercise isn't bad there's nothing wrong with exercise but you can get a lot more out of it than just exercise and so with the young horse you especially one she seems pretty what we'd call left-brained where she's thinking through things she's not just reacting uh, which is what makes her a, a good a good horse, a safe horse. Um, horses that tend to be more right-brained are usually the ones that are also more speedy, more spooky. Again, they're not bad horses. We just got to focus less on 
this leadership aspect, we gotta focus more on their confidence. With her, we need to focus on the leadership part. And we need to give her, we need to give her a, a way to tell us she's cooperating <laughs> and she's participating versus just moving her feet. So here I'm gonna be picky about, I'm not, I'm gonna keep my feet in this kind of central area and I'm gonna drive her ribs out. And as you know, I'm big on this, the idea of the three circle game where the hind feet are making a circle, the front feet are making a circle, and then my feet are making a circle. There. And again, all horses come out of the box with a counter bend where they, they're, it's a defensive position that they take where they push their rib cage towards us. So we just gotta show her that actually we'd like that hip to stay over there. I also like that she's not overly sensitive or reactive, but she's not super dull either. I, I really like that. She's kind of right there in the middle, which is a good place to be. Well, and the only way to make her dull is by nagging her. Like there was a couple times I asked her and then she didn't respond, so I got firmer. Um, and then she responded right away. I didn't have to do it multiple times. Um, and there we had a, she breathed out and she licked and chewed. So again, for those of you watching, you need to also understand by me getting her to bend her ribs, that's gonna help her release tension and be even more relaxed and more comfortable in the new space. So you can have a left-brained horse that's nervous or that's uncomfortable at the moment. It's typically gonna be less obvious than a right-brained horse when they're getting upset, but they can still, so we can still help her get more comfortable um, in this environment. You saw it when you come off trailer, it's a new place, looking around, and nothing wrong with that either. Um, and that's kind of like, from her training perspective, one of the number one priorities of hauling her to a new place would be for her to have a positive experience where she gets settled here, she gets comfortable here. And that, you know, and it's like, you don't have to come here and have her, her ride the same level she does where you board her. We need her to come to a new place and get settled, get connected with you where she's paying attention and th that's it. So that brings me to another point of something that I would, and, and right now I've not found anything that really stands out to me that is really unique to her. That's like, oh, for the, other than her pushy with her nose. Um, one of the things that I would do with any young horse is I would try to have them connected with me each session, you know? And so that's like, if I walk over here, could, can she follow without, you know, me having to drag her around, you know? So if I turn, so you can see we have connection here, but you want to keep that and you want to strengthen that and, and develop that every time you work with them. And one of the real simple ways to do it is by just leading them around. where you practice transition. So you're leading, but you're doing it kind of with a purpose. So I'm saying, if I walk off, can you walk off? If I stop, can you stop? If I back up, can you back up? And then we'll pepper in some shoulder yields in here. Again, you do this on both sides. Ooh, that was a little better. She quick, catches on quick, doesn't she? But yeah, when you're leading her, try to not do as many of these turns where you're turning away from her. Try to focus a little bit more on walking into her, yeah. And what I would do is put one hand on the halter here and then one hand to tap the shoulder. See, because her nose goes, but then her shoulder's kind of left behind. So get her nose there and then tap the shoulder. So those are a couple yields that I would be picky on. I'm going to, for this is now for your sake, I want to review one more that I think is going to be important for you to do. So we talked about the three circle game on the circle, where your, your emphasis is bending the ribs. But the other part, see there, she's... See there, she really just plowed right through my space and that's where I got busier with the stick. <clears throat> so the three circle game is good for, for the rib cage, um, but practicing walking into her and having her respect that space is also gonna be a good proactive step. So just to review this, you're gonna step into her and see how she's widening out. And this is also gonna be something you'd practice riding. 
you'd put your inside leg on, you'd practice stepping her out where you don't always have to use a direct rein to turn. And this is just practicing drive, and this will be safer to have her circle you where she's giving you a little more room. And then also, when you change directions, tell me if you can see the difference. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show two versions. You tell me if you can see a difference. Here's one version. Okay, here's the second version. What was the difference? So the second one, I drew her in and had draw as she changed directions. I don't want you to do that with her like that yet. Okay. okay. She needs to, re she needs to, and see how she's getting better already if I stop and then she's, she's staying out there. Yeah. This, the first way I showed, I changed hands and I did it like this. And I focused on moving her front end. So when horses are a little pushy, it's usually with their front, you know, the front half, the shoulders, the neck, the nose. So watch, I reach down the rope, I redirect her, and then I ask the front feet to step across. Okay, so that's a little bit more offensive, right? That's me being, I'm being a little more bossy with her saying, hey, I want you to move away. It's a little bit more about them seeing you as the leader, not as much about confidence and relaxation. The draw one where I step away from them, that's more about confidence and relaxation. So diff neither one's right or wrong, it's just different ways for depending on what your goals and outcomes are. Another thing that I think she would really like, just based on her personality, is obstacles. Yes. Uh, yeah, doing obstacles with her would be really great, and that's really good for young horses because they're in a very left brain state of mind when they're doing them. They're paying attention to where their feet are. Um, it's a great thing to do with, with young horses. Yeah. Um, so obstacles, that's an easy one. And let me just check her out with a flag here. I've just done some yielding tests of like, will she accept me as the leader and will she stay connected with me? And those were check, check. Now I'm gonna do two confidence tests. One with the flag, which is rhythmic motion. And then I'm gonna do one with things touching her with the lariat rope, okay? And she's terrified. Hold your horses, folks. Stampede. No, so this is exactly what you'd expect from a left brain horse. She's not sure about it. You can see by her head up and the ears back, she's like, I'm not sure, but she's licking and chewing and she's like, I think I'm okay. <laughs> but the whole key was there, I think I'm okay. Where a horse that's scared is gonna be going, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, and I gotta leave. And so she, she's, you know, that more left brain. That's again, what you liked about her when you went and saw her, um, that you saw that she was a pretty innately confident horse. You know, and somebody probably did something with the flag here. Um, I would like to get it where she, her head doesn't elevate when the flag is brought out, but she's, she's handling that super well. So you could almost say, a minute ago I was doing some training tests. This is now a little more of a taming test. I'm seeing how tame is she? You know, if something surprises her and comes from the ground or her hip, it's like she speeds up a little bit. Well, you could ride that, you know? She doesn't take off bucking like crazy and go, oh my gosh, and kick out at the flag and, and have a meltdown. Uh, she just literally sped up a little bit. But again, you see her only bad habit I'm finding, see how when she wants to leave that hip is close to me? We wanna fix that. So your number one priority you gotta be is to, is to keep her ribs and hindquarters away from you on the circle. That's kind of the only bad habit I think I found on the circle. She has a habit of the, the ribs and hip coming through there. Um, so she obviously knows circles and moving around. That's great. She's confident. But we, so there's going to be a time where you ask her to do something that she wasn't ready for. Like maybe it's canter, maybe it's trot, maybe it's change directions. And she might have a protest and kick out. If she's out there, it's no big deal. We just carry on. But if she's right here and you get kicked, that's, now it's a big deal. And so, so she needs to be, when things are going well, when she's not kicking out, is the time where Take a little bit of pressure and just get her in the habit of when she leaves out on a circle, watch. She goes through here and then see the hip is right there. That's what we need to do. I'm gonna fix it here for you real quick, but I want you to just observe this, this moment here. Hip is right there. Watch, I'll ask her to leave again. 
Now I'm, I'm doing that quick, but the flag, there's like hardly any pressure there. So I'm barely touching her. Ooh, do you see that? See that time she stayed away as she went out on the circle. Okay, that's what you want. When you go to send her, she needs to give you space so that you don't get kicked. Because you, she's a young horse. See that, how she's respecting my space there? With a young horse, you have to expect them to act like a young horse and then be happy when she's being really good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But you have to go, she's young, like she's gonna do things. So you have to be ready for that. And that's one of the examples of that. Okay. So I'll put the flag away. Let me get the lariat rope out and we'll test that. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Um, I believe it was Tom Dorrance who would say, there's not a bad place on a horse to hang a rope. And I'd love to see more people getting interested in just doing horsemanship with these lariat ropes because there's so much value in getting a horse comfortable with these ropes being all around them. Um, even if you never got them to yield to it, if it was just uh, building their confidence with it touching them, it's so powerful. So we're gonna start off by just, um, now you could just rub her with the rope or something if you really thought she was afraid, but we'll just start off with it here. And to me, this kind of simulates, what if something kind of randomly just touched her on the hind quarters when you're on a trail ride? You know, would she kick out at it? Would she be okay with it? You know, what would happen there? You can see she walks off with it, no problem. And again, either the lady prepared her with this well or she's very comfortable and you know, not bothered. Now I'll pull on it here. Now I like that. When I pulled on it, she kind of sat into it and hunkered down. I like that. I'd rather her do that than tuck her butt and get scared of it and try to run away from that pressure. Because if you ever try to drag something or you're, you know, when you're asking a horse to wear a saddle or a cinch, you know, you don't want them to get scared of it and, and get tight with it. You want them to just wear it and be okay with the, the cinches on your saddle. And that's what she's kind of showing right there. Like, couldn't have done that better. Now we're going to a little bit harder area. So this area just above their hock on a hind leg can be a little more scary to them. So we'll just have her wear it here. It's funny, this weekend I was at a clinic and there was a lady there that had a horse that was super well trained. It was like a five or six year old. Took ninth at the world show in ranch riding and ranch versatility last year. And she walked up with a lariat rope to it and the horse sat back on the trailer and got all scared just by her walking around <laughs> with the rope. It was very scared of ropes. And to me, that was a bit of a hole there, you know? It's like, this is just kind of to me some of the basic things that we could get them used to before we start getting into the fancy training. So again, you can see she's handling that just fine. And uh, this is, so far, only good news is, I think she's great, Mary. I think you found a really good one. I, I think the lady that had her did a good job of training her. She taught her some really nice things. You know, we, I, I'm more picky about personal space. Not everybody's that picky about it. It's Everybody's got different, you know, levels and standards of those things. Um, but her, her, so her, I, I like the training that she has. She understands pressure. She's not afraid of it at all. She's comfortable with the human. There's no way that she's scared of us. Um, she catches on very quickly. So disposition wise, she learns quick. She's level headed. She settled into a new place really quickly. I mean, just a pluses everywhere. Right. Like really good, really, really good. Yeah. There's one more thing I want to do with her. Cause there's only one, one hole that we found, which was the personal space issue. So now I'm going to show you a game, but I wanted her to get a little bit settled before we did this game. And you you're probably are already familiar with it. The, <clears throat> um, we call this the owning space game. And so I'm basically just going to take what we've already been saying about this and just take it to a next level. So this is now not testing. This is now training. <laughs> uh, so the premise is super simple. I'm gonna stand somewhere and I'm just, I'm just gonna sign her up a little bit more. And I would recommend you do this game for the next five sessions. I'm gonna wave the stick and I'm gonna ask her to just respect my space. There we go. And the new level is now not to the end of my arm, to the end of the stick. As long as I can't reach her with the stick, we're good. Okay, so now I gotta walk somewhere else. And all I'm doing is I'm walking around 
and I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna say, this is my space, okay? And that's it. When you played with her, I saw you hold back a little bit with the stick where she would come through and you would, you would move a little bit to accommodate her. And this is the classic thing is people go to like, I say, okay, wave the stick and they go like this. And make sure they don't touch the horse, okay? So what's more important than me doing this is gonna be you doing this now. So that's the first one though, of just owning space. Then the level two of this is, I'm gonna look past her and I can see a tree across the road. I'm gonna focus on that tree. I'm gonna walk slowly on this line and I'm gonna ask her to move off this line. Very good. What do, what, if you turned her out with one of my horses here, what would she do? What would they do? They would figure out who's in charge. They would meet, somebody would squeal, somebody would move away, somebody would own their space. This is all natural to them. In fact, the, so what you guys didn't hear is Mary was saying, got a little confession here. I just got her. I don't want to not have her be my friend. I don't want to scare her. I don't want her to think I don't want to be with her next to her. And that is what holds most people back with this. And I get it. I totally understand that. That's human logic. That's not horse logic. That's called being anthropomorphic. You're putting how you would be. Like if you walk up to me and I whacked you with a stick, you'd be like, I don't want to be by him. That was rude. You know, this isn't how horses think. And then I just said to Mary, if you turn two horses out together, what are they going to do? They're going to meet, but they're not like, hey, I got some hay over here. Come eat it with me. That's not what they're going to do, is it? What are they going to do? Um, find it out. They're going to fight it out and see who's in charge and who's not, and that one gets to eat. And maybe in a couple of weeks, they'll be friends. Yeah. <laughs> but at first, what they care about is who's in charge. Yeah. They need to know because that's survival. Yeah. Survival 101. Do we need to rely on you to be afraid or for me to be afraid? Right. Who's gonna, yeah. Who needs to be the one that's in charge of security detail around here? <laughs> okay. They need to know that right away. For, for all kinds of reasons, but safety is one of them. So what's ironic is by me doing this with her, she's gonna be more settled and actually more connected with me just after me being firmer with her over here because I've established myself as the leader very clearly and strong, probably a little more strong than you have just because you were trying to be nice and trying to be a little bit passive, yes. okay? Again, nothing wrong with that. At some point though, she needs to see you as the leader. Because if, if you guys are kind of buddies and you're friends and it's just 50-50, then 50% meaning she only sees you as the leader 50% of the way. That means if you take her out on a trail ride, she's thinking, I need to be looking for danger because there's not one of us, you know, I'm just as much the leader as you are. And really, she needs to rely on you for safety, not her own instincts. And that's what we're always challenging horses to do. So that's a really good point. So yeah, you now, if you just... Remember I said there's blocks and yields. If you, every time you asked her to move, you just went to a high level of pressure and ambushed her, she'd be terrified of you. But we didn't do that. We only got firmer with her whenever she crowded us. She started it. So ironically, it's gonna build more respect, which is gonna mean she trusts you more and she's gonna want to be with you more because horses want to have a leader. What does it take to be a leader? Constant purpose. One follower. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so if you can get her to be that one follower, you're the leader. All right, so it's your turn. Okay. So I want you to just go for a walk and you're going to own your space. And stop. Wave the stick. Yep. Good. Perfect. Now, she respected that pretty good, didn't she? Yeah, she really did. And that's because I've touched her with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have to be willing to, when she, if she becomes less sensitive tomorrow, when you're at home and everything's more comfortable, she's gonna test it again. You have to be willing to be effective with that. Okay? So walk out, walk on again. <laughs> she's like, I got the idea, I don't need to be any closer. And stop. Good. Perfect. Okay, now, the next one is, you're gonna wave the stick on a line and you're gonna walk through her. So go back out to where you were. And I'm gonna stand right where you have to go through her to get to me. Okay. There's no, because what a lot of people do, if they don't really, if they're not really buying what I'm selling here, they go like this. They're walking, they're waving, and they go around the horse. That's like the most common thing that people do here. Okay. The other one is, some people go, I wouldn't do that, and they go like this. And they go running in too fast. <laughs> so don't do either one of those. Walk slowly, but carry a big stick. I think somebody famous said that one time, nice and slow. You're willing to touch her if she doesn't move out of the way. 
and you maybe went one step off to the side, okay. but just one. That wasn't too bad. Okay, we're gonna do that again. Towards the cameraman? Yeah, towards the cameraman. There you go. Now, wait, hold up. L let all your rope out, damn the rope. This time, I want you to make, I want you to wave your stick sideways. Yeah. Now walk. See how that created a bigger swath? Yeah. Yeah, super. So, this is such a easy step for a horse to be like, oh, you're the leader. Okay. Versus like circle, side pass, change directions, back up, do this, do that. You know, this is just, hey, this is my spot and you can't be here. This is so, so much closer to what horses actually do with each other. They say, that's my water. You need to stay over there. Yeah. It's mine right now. Yeah. That's my hay pile. And then when they leave, it's like, oh, now the other one can come in. Yeah. But this is using what's natural to the horse. Yep. So, so I think that actually is going to be the most important thing is you need to be her leader before you try to be her friend. Okay. okay? Prey animals need leadership. They need confidence. They need understanding. They need all those things. But I think her trusting you as the leader is the key. And she'll be a little safer for you to be around too. Yeah. Um, so again, this is a pretty minor thing. Um, it's an important step, but it's a pretty minor one. I'm literally giving you homework for like the next five sessions yeah. and that's it. <laughs> After that, it's it's kind of all, all the regular stuff. And are you already a Patreon member, right? I am. Yeah. So I, what I would do is go through the fundamental series that we have on there with her. Okay. Um, some of it we already covered just now, but then I would just go through that step by step. Pick two things, one, one or two things out of that series, okay. in, and I would do it in order. So start with the one, then go to the, and you're probably past the first, maybe the first and second one already, but pick one or two things, watch the video and go, okay, and my next time I work with her, I'm going to make sure I get those two things in, those yields or those confidence tests, whatever they are, okay. and then um, go do whatever you want with her. Okay. Have some fun. Enjoy your new horse because you got a good one. Nice. So, all right. Well, is there any other questions you have for me? So Mary was saying she's a little apprehensive about trailering her here. So we'll get that on video here too. I'll go help her with the trailer loading. Um, but you're saying the riding is going well and, you know, and I mostly have experience with you riding. And so I, I, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, yeah, I think the main thing is giving her some experiences, realizing she's a young horse. So don't make assumptions, especially if, if you have her sit for a couple weeks or a couple months, if it's cold out winter time, that first session back is for her, not for you. So you don't have, any don't have any expectations. Walk in there and go, let's see where she's at today. As if it was your first time meeting her. Okay. Get to know her, check out her impulsion, check out her confidence level, her relaxation level. And uh, that's the main thing with a young horse is if they do sit for a time, um, you, you don't want to come back into work and expect them to be right where you left off. Yeah. She might be, yeah. but, but don't go in there expecting that. Because right. if that first session back is for her, then it's guaranteed you're going to go well because you're going to read her. Then the next session come out again and you go, oh, now I got my horse back that I had a month ago, you know, before that cold weather came in and now we can carry on with it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think you got a good one. I think she's going to be a great project for you and you guys are going to have a lot of fun. Now, Mary had a really good older horse that unfortunately passed away recently and you were apprehensive about now you ended up with a young, you weren't thinking you were going to get a young one, but the market's kind of tough right now and you ended up with a young one. But I, I think you did a great job of, of picking out a good one. And so you just wanted me to check her out for you, make sure that you were, you, what you were seeing was true and, and, and not just guessing it or, you know, you were, yeah, it's kind of more confirmation is what you were looking for. And yeah, yeah I a hundred percent, I think you got a good horse here. You're going to have a lot of fun with her over the years. So super. Well, um, yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to Mary for, for hitting me up about this and being willing to uh, video it and show you guys what we're checking out here. And this is you know, on this channel, a lot of times it's a problem horse that's got all these issues. So this is a good one for um, just kind of, hey, there are some really nice horses out there that have good dispositions. You can't teach disposition. So if you can find one, if you're looking in the market for a horse and you can find one with the right disposition, the training is easy. You know, the training part takes care of itself. Um, but not, you know, not obviously not every horse is going to be wired this way. This is, you know, one out of 50 horses, you know, one out of 100 horses that 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 come out like this so so yeah enjoy it and uh, thanks for bringing her out we're going to go ahead and take a look at the trail loading and we'll have you guys just kind of tune in and watch that and uh, thanks for bringing her out anything else you want to add um another other than i'm blessed to have you in our community it's it's awesome so you, you oh. don't feel like you know oh my god i hit a dead end and this is what i'm stuck with yeah so i appreciate that awesome awesome
And uh, they should join the Patreon page too, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, we'll leave a link in the description below for that. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.